Retro Horror Back, Day 10 of the 100 horror films in 31 days is over. For me, it's over because uh, I watched six movies today and some really good ones, too. So let's get let's get to it. First up was The Shining, Stanley Kubrick's classic horror film with Jack Nicholson. Man, what can I, what can I say about this that hasn't already been said? Uh, just a just a wonderful movie. It's uh, it's two and a half hours, but it feels like an hour. Uh, you know, and Stanley Kubrick, if you watch this closely, the first forty minutes is really um, a lot of static dialogue shots, and it works. And other, you know, he's got a magic about him that um, he can make a standard dialogue scene with a static camera work, whereas in other films it would be just, you'd be bored stiff. Um, but uh, yeah, the build-up and the suspense leading up to the final ending is uh, classic Stanley Kubrick. And uh, yeah, he's one of the, pro he's a, certainly a top 10 director of all time, in my opinion. Um, and this is probably a top 10 horror movie of all time. This release has um, audio commentary, making of special features. I'm probably going to go through that in November, but uh, yeah, a good way to start the day is uh, with Shining. <clears throat> then I followed it up with the rock musical comedy from New Zealand, Death Chasm. Uh, cute movie, fun movie, uh, along the lines of Shaun of the Dead. But it has its own vibe. You got uh, two death metal high schoolers that uh, that are uh, trying to find their way through life, and um, they they end up they end up creating this. Uh, they find this book or uh, this song, if you will, that has a um, that uh, has a, the ability to. Uh, raise the dead, but it also has the ability to give you wealth and power, etc. And so there's this big interplay, uh, lots of um, lots of unearthly type beings come into this and zombies, and it's a comedy though, it's hilarious, and uh, I highly recommend this one. This is, if you like Shaun of the Dead, I think you'll like this one too. I have to admit the, the the two guys the two guys that played the lead actors in this for the uh, the death metal musicians was uh, did a great job so, yeah it's deathgasm thanks took a nose dive after that the gingerbread man two passion of the crust. Uh, Gary Busey didn't come back for this one. The only redeeming feature I can give you on this Full Moon production is that uh, Michelle Bauer, the Scream Queen, showed up for a cameo and she gets killed in a pretty grisly way. Uh, but it was a painful 80 minutes. Yeah. I got number three. I'm probably going to watch that tomorrow. I'll, then I'll put myself out of that misery. Then I watched from Severn Films, Axe. Fred Friedel, 70s drive-in classic. Uh, it's 67 minutes. And it's a kind of, it's a rape revenge story. Uh, but it's, it's, it, it's got its moments. It's very spooky and uh, creepy. And, uh, I, you know, it's, uh, it's a classic 70s drive-in movie. I highly recommend it, particularly if you're into the kind of the rape revenge stuff. This is an interesting take on it. It's a quick watch as well. Didn't get a chance to watch the, the second. There's actually three features on this puppy. I have an, and some and some additional special features. I just I watched Axe. I'll get to the others probably in November. Now next up was the Grindhouse release of Pieces. Wow, love this movie. I love this release. I, I think this is the kind of thing that, uh, from a distribution standpoint. Uh, demonstrates why, in my opinion, Brian House releasing his number. Even though they, even though they don't release a lot of films, what they do release is number one, in my opinion. Uh, love it, love it to death. 
this thing is chock full of special features. Um, Pieces is just a crazy, crazy 80s slasher movie. Uh, with with the um, husband and wife team of Christopher George and uh, uh, Linda Day George and Linda Day George. I mean, this has so many iconic scenes in it that um, it deserves its own review. Uh, but I tell you that the there's some some kills that are just iconic. But the the best scene of all time, in my opinion, the greatest. Uh, come apart in how in horror movie history is Linda Day George um, and if you don't believe me take a second to watch this you see it yes while we were out here fumbling with that music the lousy bastard was in there killing her bastard He cut that poor girl in half while she was still alive. Okay, so with that clip, I think I rest my case. I think that's the greatest, single greatest outburst in film horror film history. Anyway, uh, she's gonna go. She's gonna be remembered for all time with that outburst. <clears throat> At any rate, pieces. This Grindhouse release is just loaded. Um, it's got a soundtrack of the film. We got some internal artwork there. And it's got a, um, a Blu-ray of the film. And there's two cuts. There's a Spanish um, or European edition and then the original U.S. Um, and there's also... <clears throat> with this film, there's a um, a lo load of extras. There's a 90-minute documentary on 42nd Street interviewing all the key players back from the 70s and early 80s of 42nd Street. Sam Sherman, Joe Dante, Larry Cohen, that type of thing. Uh, that's that's a great, great deal there. Of course, you get a little booklet. So I, I, I will probably go through this in November in more detail but uh, I love this release and the pieces is clearly an 8 out of 10 movie I mean it's there's you can't find an 80s slasher film that has as many iconic kills and ridiculous scenes as this I mean you've got it you've got a scene where a corpse comes back to life and grabs claws into this guy's crotch I mean I could go on and on about that movie. It's just hilarious. <clears throat> um, last up was The Editor. Um, that's a Canadian film that is a homage to uh, the Italian Giallo films. It was made in 2015. Um, and it has a, a slew of um, cameos. You've got Udo Kier playing the psychiatrist. Uh, you've got Paz Horta, I think is her name. She was in um, Nurse 3D. She plays the crazy ex-actress wife of the editor. The editor basically is a, uh, a, a guy that's had, through an accident, had his hands, fingers chopped off. He's still an editor, but he's kind of deemed to be kind of washed up. Um and he's and he ends up in in a situation where he's being accused of these murders, uh, and of course he's trying to prove he's not. In fact, he's probably the most innocent character of anyone around him. Everyone around him has just got it's just a, a flawed character. Uh, maybe not the killer, but they're all kind of despicable people all around him. He seems like the only one of any moral decency. Um, but it's a fun. It, it's a the editor is a fun. Uh, 90 minute ride and it's got a great couple pretty good twists endings one right after the other I don't want to give anything away but it's um, it's worth the watch just to just to see the twist endings some great kills and I like it because it sort of um, it uh, it makes fun of Italian genre, uh, giallo films 
but at the same time it pays homage to them, which is, um, I think, very difficult to do. You either pick one, but it, it, it does that simultaneously, and it does it effectively very well. So, yeah, that was the editor. Um, I watched the Blu-ray of that. So that was day 10. That's the wrap-up on day 10, and I'll be back probably tomorrow with day 11. Thanks.